Okay, still in the truck, having a great time though, studying my Bible uh, with no interruptions. Uh, wanted to finish up the book of 2 Timothy. We are in chapter 4. Again, Timothy, uh, I mean, was the last person that Paul wrote to. This was the his uh, last will and testament, if you will. His final uh, book, and this would be the last chapter that he wrote that was recorded in the Word of God. Although you got Titus and Philemon after that, and probably Hebrews. Uh, these were his last words. This is uh, dated uh, 66. He's got. Uh, Ruckman's got it at 68. And then Titus he wrote to also. But these are the last words he wrote. Uh, he pinned down before he got his head cut off. Uh, church tradition says he got his uh, beheaded in Rome and I have no reason to doubt that I doubt they would uh, lose that in history but it's not recorded in the Bible so you know I can't prove that but uh, pretty sure that's what happened to Paul all right verse uh, chapter 4 verse 1 he says I charge thee so he's gonna give him some orders here now these orders are uh, mainly for a pastor a preacher an evangelist a missionary but it uh, it is good for every Christian. Uh, we're all preachers of the word, folks. Even if you're not uh, a pastor or even called to preach, you are to uh, preach the gospel to every creature. Uh, as Jesus said, he said, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. He's going to judge the, uh, us at the judgment seat of Christ. He's going to judge uh, the lost and the Old Testament saints and stuff at the great white throne. And then he's going to have the judgment of the nation at his appearing in his kingdom. He says, and a lot of uh, preachers have been called to preach out of these verses right here. He says, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all longsuffering and doctrine. You got to reprove and rebuke. <laughs> you don't hear a lot of that in preachers today, do you? He said, exhort, build them up with all longsuffering and doctrine. Be patient with them, love them, and teach them doctrine. We are to teach the whole counsel of God the entire Bible but you must rightly divide the word of truth okay verse 3 for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but after their own lust shall heap shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears uh, Joel Oystein and all those that crowd comes to mind and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables notice that they were saved probably preaching the word and doing the right thing because they turned away their ears from the truth they knew what the truth was they found it it's in this book folks and then they turned away unto fables. They went, uh, a lot of people will read books about the Bible. They will uh, listen to teaching on the Bible, but they won't read it for themselves. And they'll be turned away to fables. Uh, what's that book Joel Osteen wrote? Your Better Life Now or something? Are you kidding me? Those are fables, folks. Uh, verse 5, But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Now, the uh, uh, Timothy was a pastor of the church at Ephesus, but Paul told him to do the work of the, an evangelist. A lot of times now, an evangelist, you think of somebody like Jimmy Swaggart or somebody that... Uh, 
you know, goes out and they have these great big meetings. But the work of the evangelist, folks, is going door to door, preaching on the street, telling others, handing out tracts. That's the work of the evangelist, getting people saved. He said, make full proof of thy ministry. You got to, it's work. It's not an easy job. I wouldn't think to be a, a pastor of a church. Uh, verse 6, for I am now ready. Now listen to the, I I love these verses. It, it, it moves me when I uh, read these verses. This is, again, the last thing he's saying. And he's fixing to get his head cut off. So you got to put yourself in his place a minute. And he said, for I, uh, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I'm fixing to get killed. And he hadn't lost the faith. Listen, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. He ran the whole race. I have kept the faith. That that just that moves me every time I read that henceforth or because I've done that there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous judge shall uh, give me at that day that's the judgment seat of Christ and not to me only but to, unto all them also that love his appearing the crown of righteousness Paul was promised a crown of righteousness. I got a list made right here. See my silly crown. Uh, there's five crowns met, mentioned in the Bible. And if you wanted to write them down and do a study on it. It's 2 Timothy 4.8. 1 Corinthians 9.25. 1 Thessalonians 2.19. James 1.12. 1 uh, first Peter 5.4. And Revelation 2.5. Uh, Ten, and they are the crown of joy, righteousness, life, glory, and the incorruptible crown. Anyhow, that was just a little side note. Uh, where am I? Okay, verse 9. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. Can you hear the... I mean the the urgency uh, in his voice I can almost hear it and this is very sad here he said for Demas hath forsaken me having loved this present world and is departed unto Thessalonica Grecians to Galatia Titus unto D D M Dalmatia I'm, I'm going to mess up these words I'm sorry so everybody left him. Uh, he says, only Luke is with me. Only the beloved physician, the writer of the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts is with him. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. Now, if you all remember, Mark... Uh, left him uh, that was what the big split was all about if you want to flip over to uh, Acts chapter uh, 15 and verse uh, 36 and some days after Paul said unto Barnabas let us go again and visit our brethren in every uh, city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do and Barnabas determined to take with him John, that's John Mark, whose surname it was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him, uh, him with them, who departed from departed them from Pamphylia and went not with them for the work. And contentions were so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from another and so Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus now Barnabas and uh, Paul were both filled with the Holy Ghost both men of God but they split some churches split 
and sometimes it's God's will. They probably got twice as much done, but he took, uh, Barnabas took Mark. Paul didn't want to take him because he didn't stay there and do the work with him. And, uh, but now he's saying, bring him for her. He'll be profitable unto me. You get to the end of your rope, you get down and out, and you'll know who your true friends are, won't you? So evidently, Mark got right with God, and he's back in the ministry. And I totally am going to mess up these uh, names, so I'm sorry. And Tachikius <laughs> have I sent to Ephesus. The cloak that I left in Troas uh, with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee, and the books, but especially the parchments. Bring that Bible. He wanted his Bible with him, his Old Testament. Uh, and wouldn't you love to read the books that he was calling for? And he said, Alexander the coppersmith uh, did much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. He's the guy that uh, I believe it was Ephesus where he uh, really uh, he he opposed his work. Of whom that uh, of whom be thou where also? Watch out for that guy, for he hath greatly withstood our words. Wasn't he the guy that made the? Uh, made the idols for Diana, I believe. At my first answer, no man stood with me, <laughs> but all men forsook me. He served God, though everybody else went away. We used to sing a song on the bus when I was a bus minister, and it said, uh, the B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I'll stand alone on the word of God. The B-I-B-L-E. Well, Paul did stand alone. Uh, verse 17. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me. Hallelujah to the Lamb. He will never leave you or forsake you. And strengthen me that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear. He was the apostle to the Gentile. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Now, some people say, well, he was offered up, uh, maybe, uh, you know, was put with the Christians at Rome uh, and was attacked by a lion. I don't know. He might be uh, spiritually speaking and talking, you know, like uh, uh, Daniel or uh, something to that effect. I'm not sure about that. That'd be a good thing to look into. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Uh, even though he's fixing to die, he knows that he is going to be preserved in his heavenly kingdom. He's going to see the Lord. He's not, uh, not fearing death, seems... Uh, he said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Now he's going to salute Priscilla and Aquila and the house of whatever that guy's name is. I'm not even going to attempt it. Erastus abode at Corinth, but Trophimus, I know I said that wrong, have I left in Milton sick now wait a minute the apostle Paul he has the apostle gifts he's got the gift of healing he sent out cloths and they healed people why couldn't he heal this guy because the apostolic gifts were over uh, Acts 28 28 and 29 when the Jews finally rejected for the last time the gospel uh, there's no more need for the sign gifts. They were done with right then. Uh, and that's your Pentecostal friends <laughs> will have a problem with that. But why couldn't he heal him? Because he his gift, 
the uh, first Corinthians chapter 1 verse 22 it says the Jews require a sign the Gentiles don't the Gentiles seek after wisdom but the Jews require a sign and we are not in the apostolic I can't say that right age anymore folks and he said and listen to the urgency here do thy diligent to come before winter Eubulus uh, greeteth thee and uh, Pudens and Linus and Claudia and all the brethren the Lord Jesus Christ be with thy spirit grace be with you amen last words Apostle Paul wrote uh, at least that are recorded in the Bible he says the Lord Jesus Christ be with thy spirit and he left you with grace he was the one that brought in grace remember he was taught I mean Jesus brought in grace of course but he was the one that was given the revelations and the mysteries and taught us about the grace of God uh, by grace through faith grace be with you amen hallelujah to the lamb and that would be the book of second timothy and uh, we'll get started in titus we're almost done with our uh, survey through the epistles of paul all right god bless you read your bible and pray without ceasing have a wonderful wonderful day